When you look around for predictions about the 2024 Colorado Buffaloes football season, you see two things. You see people on this side who don't like Coach Prime, who are haters. They're going to go 0-12. They're going to go 1-11. This is the worst team ever. They don't deserve all that hype. And then you have people on the other side thinking that this is a demigod-type team who's going to make the college football playoffs absolute me riders. And that's why I'm here today. I have no stakes in this Colorado team. I am in the middle, and I'm going to give you the most truthful honest and candid prediction of the Buffalo's 2024 season. But before your opinion is swayed by what I have to say, go in the comments down below and tell me Colorado's record for 2024. Give me your crystal ball. If you don't know who I am, I'm Saturday Shenanigans and I post amazing college football content all off season long. Feel free to subscribe so you never miss out on another upload. Did you think just because of a four win season, people were going to stop talking about Coach Prime and the Buffs? If you did, you are out of your mind. No matter what this team does, they are going to be in the center of the media spotlight because everyone wants clicks and this is what happens. Here's how I'm going to break it down. First, we're going to look at what happened last year. Then we're going to look at the man behind it all, obviously the coach. Third, the returning slash leaving players. And finally, a full look at their schedule. All you really need to know about last year was the first three contests for the Buffs. On the road at number 17 TCU, they win a thriller against a team who we thought was going to be great again. They had made the national championship in the year prior. Shador Sanders went nuts, threw for 510 yards. Everything was amazing. Then they come home to face their rivals, Nebraska. Remember, the Cornhuskers were in a rebuilding phase with a brand new head coach named Matt Rule. Colorado won solid 36 to 14. Then they play another one of their rivals, this time group of five Colorado State. They barely escape, but at this time, we knew they were exposed. They went on to lose their next eight of nine games. They could not block for Shador Sanders. On the defensive side of the ball, they also had issues with depth. They couldn't run. It was all around a disaster. But was this a failure for first-year head coach Deion Sanders? No, because remember, this was a team that went 1-11 in 2022. Although the narrative is that this was one of the worst teams in college football, they still won three more than the prior year. Overall, this was Sanders' third year of coaching college football, starting in 2020 with Jackson State out of the SWAT conference. In 2021, he led this team to an 11-2 season, then the next year, 12-1. He knows how to coach, but can he do it at a power four level? We knew that if Prime wanted to make that serious jump, to a conference or even playoff contender in 2024. He needed to fix the holes. Now, this team didn't have holes in the skill positions highlighted by guys like Shador Sanders and Travis Hunter. It was obviously the trenches. So how would he attack that? Come on now, is that even a question? Obviously, he went with the transfer portal, starting with a guy named Tyler Johnson, a four-star, six-foot-five, 320 inside offensive lineman from the University of Houston. He also added a few sneaky guys on the offensive line including Justin Mayers from UTEP and also Yakiri Walker from UConn. But Prime's biggest hits in the portal actually came on the other side of the ball in guys like Samuel Unkinlola, defensive lineman from Pittsburgh, and also a freaky guy named Quincy Wiggins from LSU. They also got Dallin Hayden, a running back from Ohio State who has big experience already, who's going to make an impact in that run game that was lackluster seen in 2023. Who did Colorado lose first a very popular name Cormani McLean the former five-star cornerback who had some personal issues I actually made a full video about it go check it out after you watch this one link in the description 2023's leading rusher Dylan Edwards is going to a conference foe at Kansas State but of course that's why they have a guy like Hayden to come fill that void and the elephant in the room that everyone's talking about the entire offensive line said bye in the portal. It is getting replaced. All of this means the Buffs have the 8th best transfer rating in college football. However, their high school recruiting, not the same story. It's ranked 81, but of course, they want to win now. They do not really care about all of that noise, but they did get a 5-star recruit an inside offensive lineman named Jordan Seaton out of IMG Academy. He will be ready to play game 1. All of this paired with the 15th best returning production in college football, mostly from quarterback 
Shador Sanders, who last year threw for 3,230 yards, 27 touchdowns to three interceptions with a pocket that was almost never clean. When you look at the split stats from 2023 and Shador Sanders had time to throw, he was a top five quarterback in all of CFB. Now imagine this with a much improved line that will give him more time to throw plus opening up more holes for a running game so they could be multi-dimensional. He has one of the best arms in all of college football and if you deny that, you're a straight hater. There's no doubt in my mind Shadur will be in the Heisman conversation at the end of the year. Not saying he's going to win it outright. He still has a lot more work to do. But with this formula, it can be successful for Colorado. All right, now you have the background. It's the time that we've all been waiting for my official Buffalo schedule prediction. I'll preface this with one thing. They're moving from the Pac-12, which had an incredible 2023 to a Big 12 in 2024 that is wide open. Seriously, anyone could win it. That's a huge advantage to Coach Prime and this squad. I'm not saying there's no great teams in the Big 12, but there's no Goliath that we saw last year with an Oregon and Washington going to run the conference. Game 1, August 29th on a Thursday at Folsom welcoming in North Dakota State. Now on the surface, you're going to say FCS opponent, boom, blowout, that's game. But NDSU is a very solid program. They've been one of the best over the last decade plus in the FCS. They like to have great offensive lines, protect the quarterback, slow the game down. It's going to be a close one, but I'm going to give Colorado the edge from being at home. This might be a two score to one score ball game. Week two on the road at Nebraska in Lincoln. Prime time, NBC 530. This is going to be amazing. It also is on September 7th. That's my birthday, by the way. We get back to the point. Originally, earlier on in the spring, I had Colorado winning this game, but was seeing what Nebraska's building, Matt Rule, in year two after over exceeding year one. They have Dylan Rayola possibly being a freshman who's very talented starting that game. I see Nebraska slowing this game down, grinding it out. They have the home crowd and they are going to get their vengeance for the last two years and beat Colorado at home. On to the next week at Colorado State. I don't see an issue at all. They bounce back big, win by a few scores. Game one of Big 12 play and Colorado catches a massive break at home versus Baylor. Baylor's a struggling program. I don't see them moving forward with Dave Aranda. I think he actually might get fired in the next few years. It's a homecoming game. Come on now. Colorado easily puts that thing on Baylor. Week four on the road in the bounce house at UCF. The Knights are doing some sneaky stuff in the portal. They're a lot better than most people think, but this will be a gutty Road win for the Buffs. I'm expecting a game that goes down to the absolute wire. October 12th, home at Folsom Field against Kansas State. This game is going to be a can't miss one. Kansas State coming in with their new hot shot quarterback, Avery Johnson. It's going to be Johnson versus Sanders. I'm really high on KSU and what they can do this year. They're sealing in the Big 12. Colorado drops this game. It's going to be 47 to 46. A really good one. I'm going to be honest. The Buffs got an extremely tough draw because in the next game, they have to travel to Tucson to face the Arizona Wildcats. When I predicted this in the spring, that was just after Jed Fish left. I didn't know who was staying on the Wildcats, but they kept Fafita and McMillan. That one-two punch is going to be insane. I expect Arizona to be a top 25 team. Tough environment on the road. Colorado drops back to back. October 26th, Home against Cincinnati. Cincinnati is not ready to make that next step. They're still adjusting to playing at that power four level. Remember, they just came over from the American Conference. They had a disappointing 2023 season. No problem for the Buffs. They're finally going to get their revenge, their get back after that tough little two-game losing streak. After a bye week, the Buffs will have a little extra time to prepare for Texas Tech. Texas Tech, in my mind, is a perennial mid-team in the Big 12. They went 7-6 and six last year. They're going to be at about the same exact level. Expect them to be 5-7, and seven, maybe 7-5. Seven and five. I think this is another solid road win for Colorado. Another top two-game draw starting on November 16th. They face Utah at home, and they go on the road to face Kansas. Now, in my mind, these are the two top teams, the teams to beat in the Big 12. They have a little bit more of a chance against Utah just because it's at home. The environment, this is a pseudo-rivalry game between the two, but Colorado is going to drop 
both of these. These are extremely talented teams returning a lot. Utah, obviously you have Cam Rising. Kansas, you're finally going to get a healthy season with Jalen Daniels. You have Kobe Bryant on the other side of the ball. You have Devin Neal. It's just too much sauce for Colorado to win either of these games. To end off the season, the Buffs welcome in Oklahoma State, their 40-year-old quarterback, and the best running back in the country, Ollie Gordon. Can they get to seven wins? I believe they will. I've been really stagnant with a lot of these games, but we know college football, crazy stuff happens. I believe this will be the game where Colorado finds some magic. I believe Oklahoma State does outmatch them slightly, but they're at home. They want to finish off the season strong. I'm going to give Coach Pride and the Buffs a win over the Cowboys. The Big 12 doesn't have any amazing teams at the top like the Pac-12 did, but their middle, it's going to be teams beating up on each other week in and week out. It's going to be a lot of parity, but Colorado will find a way to make a bowl another improvement with Coach Prime. This was my second summer preview about a team. Episode number one was Nebraska. Go check that out. Link in the description if you're interested. And make sure to comment your favorite team below. And I'll cover them. Thanks so much for reaching the end of the video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share with your best friend. I don't even care. I've been Saturday Shenanigans, your home for unfiltered college football content. I'll see you guys soon.